It is Tuesday, August 11th, 2020, and you are tuned into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. We were supposed to have the front row challenge at Oskaloosa last night, but the terrible line of storms that did damage across the Midwest yesterday washed out the night's racing. The event was canceled and will not be made up. It's unfortunate for the McCarls who put so much into that race every single year. Um, hopefully they'll be back and better than ever next season. Um, along with that, if you didn't see that, that line of storms also knocked down the sign at Dingus in Knoxville, turned over Ayrton Jenatin's hauler, uh, go on Twitter and find those photos and videos. Uh, thankfully, his sprint car wasn't inside and nobody was hurt. Um, supposedly, it did damage at Marshalltown Speedway as well. I saw a tweet from uh, Knoxville's Eric Arnold about that as well. So pretty wild day yesterday across Iowa and several other places. Those same Midwest storms also forced the cancellation of last night's Summer Nationals race that was supposed to take place at the Bull Ring at Rico Fairgrounds. The Summer Nationals and Modified Nationals are back tonight at Sycamore Speedway in Illinois. Brian Shirley leads the late model points while Nick Hoffman leads the Modified points. You can watch the action live tonight on Dirt Vision. Speaking of the Summer Nationals, it was announced yesterday that the season finale at Oakshade Raceway in Ohio has been canceled due to crowd restrictions in the state. In its place, Merritt Speedway in Michigan will now host the finale for 2020 on August 22nd. It will be the first time in track and tour history that the Summer National Champion will be crowned at Merritt. The Modified Nationals will join the late medals at Merritt and then close out their season August 28th and 29th at Cedar Ridge Speedway in Kentucky. For more information on those announcements, you can visit DirtCarSummerNationals.com or ModifiedNationals.com. The All-Star Circuit of Champions announced, announced yesterday they will sanction the Jim and Joanne Ford Classic at Fremont Speedway October 9th and 10th. The two nights will also feature the Ohio Fast Series and pay $5,000 to the winner on Friday and $10,000 to the winner on Saturday. The event was last sanctioned by the All-Stars in 2015. The All-Stars are off this week because of the Knoxville action and will return on August 21st at Wilmot Raceway for a showdown with the IRA Sprint Cars. If you'd like more information or to check out the All-Star schedule, you can find that at allstarsprint.com. Um, Tonight is the opener for ASCS Sprint Week for 360 Sprint Cars. Each of the six races this week will follow the All-Star format as an experiment, but the Knights don't count towards ASCS National Points. This will allow those drivers that are competing at Knoxville to not be hurt in the season-long standings. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who uh, is actually going to run these events. I know a lot of those guys um, are probably going to be at Knoxville this week, so we'll keep an eye on who uh, shows up to run those Sprint Week races, but I would imagine they'll have very nice fields each night. Each night pays 3000 to win and three. Hundred dollars to start. There are also other bonuses and payouts available through the week. The schedule for the week looks like this. Tonight they're at Lakeside Speedway. They then head to Caney Valley Speedway tomorrow, 81 Speedway on Thursday, Creek County Speedway on Friday, I-30 Speedway Saturday, and then they close out the week Sunday at Diamond Park Speedway. Every night can be streamed live on Racing Boys. We'll certainly talk about those again more as the week goes on. Last night was round number eight for the iRacing World of Outlaws Late Model World Championship. Hayden Cardwell entered the night as the points leader by only five points over Dylan Wilson. Evan C. had also been part of the title fight, but he ended up crashed last week, and that put him 50 points behind Cardwell out front. The series took on the virtual Knoxville Raceway for a 50-lap main event. Drew Hopkins went quick time on the night and then won the first heat, which put him on the pole of the feature with Tyler Ducharme to his outside. At the start, Hopkins jumped to the early lead, but he was quickly challenged by last week's second-place finisher Kendall Tucker. Tucker was good on the bottom and he took the lead by lap three. Behind Tucker, racing through the top ten was wild with drivers running three wide and also several making contact. Evan C. was again a victim of that crazy racing on lap eight when he ended up turned over, causing the race's first caution. Pole setter Drew Hopkins was the race's second caution a few laps later when he got bounced around running third and ended up spun out. The wild racing and contact continued then on the restart uh, through the field, and the race was again under caution on lap 15 when second place pointsman Dylan Wilson got spun out, also collecting several cars. Once green again, Kendall Tucker continued to lead with Hayden Cardwell second, but there was then drama for Cardwell when he lost connection and was dropped from the server. He would eventually be credited with a 17th place finish, but that opened up the points lead even with Wilson's issues earlier in the race. Out front, though, it was all Kendall Tucker. He led the rest of the way to grab his first ever series win over Devin Morgan, Davin Cardwell, Blake Cannon, and James Edens. Following the race, Dylan Wilson now has a one-point lead over Hayden Cardwell in the standings. But his recent run of races now has Kendall Tucker into third, and he's only 15 points behind Wilson for the championship lead with two races remaining. Round number nine will be at Williams Grove Speedway next Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, and the season finale will be at Dirt Track at Charlotte the following week. You can watch live for free at iRacing.com slash live or twitch.com slash iRacing. There's a new checkered pass today at WorldOfOutlaws.com from Kevin Eckert. 
This piece is all about the various sets of brothers that have competed with the World of Outlaws over the years, including the Swindells, Blaney's, Madsons, and a whole lot more. So if you're looking for some longer form reading this week um, and some cool older photos as well, check that, out, uh, check that out again. You can find that at worldofoutlaws.com. Uh, let's take a look at the streaming schedule for today. Um, there is a number of shows. Dirt Track Digest TV has the Short Track Super Series um, live from Delaware International Speedway. That's the Short Track Super Series Modified 602 Crate Sportsman. They've also got Delmarva Chargers and Delaware Super Trucks. Dirt Vision has tonight's Summer Nationals action from Sycamore Speedway. Flow Racing, besides USAC 24-7, has um, night number two of the Stock Car Shootout from RPM Speedway. They've also got the continuation of California IMCA Speed Week from Petaluma Speedway. Um, and then the aforementioned AS see a sprint week is live tonight on racing boys i think i looked at it yesterday if i remember correctly i tweeted it out uh, there are 74 races between monday and sunday this week so a ton of things going on across the streaming services and again you can find all of those links and a full schedule each day at dirttracker.com slash watch tonight um, i hope to have a new dirt tracker conversations this week uh, my plan is to do uh, a recording of that later today and then maybe have that up tonight so keep an eye on that um, if you haven't checked out the first couple dirt tracker conversations i uh, actually talked to Ayrton jenniton who uh, i talked about earlier um, about his hauler getting tipped over. I talked to him a couple of weeks ago, and I talked to Mike McKinney last week, modified driver Mike McKinney. Um, so you can find those in the same podcast feed or on YouTube uh, if you want to check those out, looking for something a, a little bit longer for him to listen to. Like I said, I will continue doing those going forward. Uh, if there's somebody you'd like me to talk to, um, got suggestions for that, certainly tweet at me, um, or you can email info at dirttracker.com um, if you have suggestions there as well, because I would love to uh, get those and, and, and talk to some folks that maybe you guys want to hear from. So uh, certainly let me know there. That's it for the show today. Hope everybody has a good Tuesday. You can find Dirt Tracker daily on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or where you get podcasts. Please subscribe and leave a review. You can also watch every day on YouTube and Facebook. You can email the show at info at dirttracker.com and you can follow along at facebook.com slash dirttracker twitter.com slash dirttracker and the website itself dirttracker.com you can follow me personally on twitter at justin underscore fiedler and you can sign up for the dirt tracker weekly newsletter on the site uh, if you don't know what that weekly newsletter is uh, just once a week i'll send out four or five kind of bullet points things that are going on things that have happened maybe a cool podcast episode maybe a cool highlight video I'll throw those in there um, and just get that in your email. Not, not you know, nothing spammy, no ads, nothing like that, um, but just a couple of cool things that I've seen throughout the week that I would like to point out and keep uh, folks abreast of. So if you want to sign up for that, you can find that at dirttracker.com as well. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. That's the show for today. We will see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.